Hi everybody, we're wrapping up day two of AWS Reinforce, theCUBE's continuous coverage. My business partner, John Furrier, and co-host is actually in Monaco, um, you know, getting ready to do a big crypto show over there, so he'll be reporting from there tomorrow. Check that out at thecube.net. Jeff Swain is here, he's the Vice President of Global Programs Store and Tech Alliances at CrowdStrike. Jeff, thanks for coming on. Thanks, David. So, tell us about your role, what store, help us understand that. Yeah, so CrowdStrike has a CrowdStrike store, which is uh, effectively a, a marketplace within our application and also right. available externally that allows customers to be able to review, decide, and trial products not only from CrowdStrike, but also from our third-party partners. So wherever we have a tech alliance, a customer can come in, see the value of the integration, see how it works on our platform and the third party's platform, and then go and request a trial. So it's a very easy and dynamic way for a customer to understand the joint value proposition CrowdStrike has with various other, other vendors and our own products as well. So your role is to bring all these cool tech companies together and create incremental value? Yes. Um, we believe that the ecosystem is really a, a natural evolution of what's happened in terms of the CrowdStrike story. If you think that we started out with a, a, you know, a very simple product at the, in the very early days, 10, 10, 11 years ago, services company built a product. That product then became a platform with various modules in it. The next evolution of that is expanding out beyond our own platform and working into other areas of, of, of interest and value. So that's where the ecosystem comes into play. So you have to underpin that with some automations, things like marketplaces and stores. You have to have integrations in place, joint applications and, and commercial vehicles to make that work. So I was walking around the other day and, I, and it caught my eye. I sat there and listened for a better part of the presentation, how to get back and do the queue, but it was a presentation between a CrowdStrike expert and an Okta expert. Yep. You know, better together was the whole thing. And yep. that, you know, I know it's kind of, and then they were describing how you guys complement each other. So that would be an example. A perfect example. I mean, we, we, we complement Okta and Okta complements us for very in various different ways. And in fact, we sort of assemble that into different narratives that work well for our customers. So as an example, with Okta, we, assemble, we work very well with them in zero trust. So we have a zero trust narrative that talks about how it works with Okta and also Zscaler. In fact, we have a, um, an alliance through the Cloud Security Alliance where we're working to build practitioner guides, build um, uh, a community of value across the different products to bring zero trust into some standardized you know, uh, reference architectures and some standardized training that brings all of our products together for, for, for the user. That would be an example of, a, of one of the narratives that we have. They'd also play in our XDR narrative. Obviously XDR helps us bring telemetry in from different products. And again, we use XDR right across you know, various, various uh, tech lines. So you so take zero trust, you'll, yep. you'll take the concept of least privilege yep. and you'll apply that to what, to endpoint, to you know, using identity, identity. with uh, Zscaler, you bring the cloud component. Correct, so then we're actually able to see how someone's traversing the entire organization. We can see who they are, we can see where they land, we can see what data they're accessing, where they're accessing it gather a whole bunch of different telemetry around that and provide the security team with the ability to be able to see what someone's doing, enforce the, um, the you know, access rights as and where they need to, see any anomalies or anomalous behavior within that and close it down before anything bad happens. So zero trust is a really important part of our, uh, of our, of, of, of our um, narratives. And you have these plays or narratives with, with, a, with a bunch of ecosystem partners, right? Correct, I mean, so correct. So take log management. Yep. Uh, maybe add some context so, to that. So around that, as you may know, we acquired um, uh, Humio. Uh, right. And around that, obviously, we have to be able to ingest and have bridges out to a large variety of different platforms to be able to ship data into our platform. I mean, one of the values of Humio is its ability to massively scale um, and very very easily and cheaply bring, bring a lot of data into a simple place and have very fast searching. Well, what are you searching? You've got to go and have data sources. So. You know, very quickly we've built out a, a large number of integrations with I think over 30 partners to easily bring data into the Humio platform to let customers be able to have that advantage. So what role does AWS play in all this? AWS has a fantastic role in um, both coordinating some of this in terms of, especially through the marketplace, the ability to uh, coordinate our transactions between us and help us work together from a transactional basis, and help the customer procure the right solutions together. 
but also AWS's nature, natural uh, inclination towards innovation means that they'll, they like to work with partners, who, especially partners who are on their platform, to drive a lot of innovation, to build out how customers are bringing more data together. Obviously, it's beneficial to them in terms of the volumes of data that go across, and computes that go across the AWS platform. But also, they encourage us to work together. They, they, they in some cases, invest in those integrations. Um, they work with programs. They bring in third-party reseller programs uh, through CPPO. So it gives us a, a platform, gives us innovation, it gives us some structure. And it's been really exciting working with them. Now, talk about CrowdStrike and your cloud strategy. How would you des describe your cloud strategy? So we've been cloud native from day one. It's one of the, one of the founding principles of CrowdStrike um, as, as we were set up uh, by our founders. So two elements, cloud native and a single agent. And those two design principles have not been broken by us at any point through our history. It's very important that we, we stick to those two principles. Our cloud is, um, was born in AWS. Um, and they've been supportive of us right through, right through our growth period. So we started out with one module, as I said, now we have, I think, 23 different modules, and we're continually growing that. We also then have a lot of support for the cloud, so you know, helping us understand what's happening within cloud environments so that our customers are better protected. In fact, at the show here, we've announced two separate um, uh, incremental products to, to, to the cloud space. One that's very much focused on um, adding a better container or better visibility inside containers in our CNAP product, and, um, and, and another area around how we do our threat hunting across the cloud. So we have a team of threat hunters, global best practitioners, who hunt right across our customers' environments. We have a whole, a whole bunch of additional cloud telemetry, so that's, that's been included into, the, into our Overwatch threat hunting team. So you'll ingest data from multiple clouds, Right, you're running on AWS, yes. but you can take data from anywhere. From anywhere, right? yeah. Including on-prem? Um, so our sensor sits on laptops, servers, right. so virtual servers, devices, where, where, de yeah. devices wherever they need to set, um, and then uh, it needs to be cloud connected. It comes into our, into our cloud, so we can we can take information from instances in any cloud environment and any laptop uh, to pretty much bring them in, and uh, that's how it works. But it's a single cloud. I mean, our value proposition is that huge um, uh, graph threat graph that we've built over the years. Um, trillions and trillions of events per day that we're now searching and using AI technologies to weed out what's good and what's bad. Yeah, so CrowdStrike, obviously, we reported on CrowdStrike in breaking analysis a lot. CrowdStrike, Zscaler, Okta, a number of other those, those companies. You're partnering with all of those guys, which is quite interesting. Yeah. You're all growing, you know, at really nice, nice clips. I wonder, <laughs> I always wonder in these situations, okay, as things get bigger and bigger and growth slows, we haven't seen that. We see, actually see the, we saw the cloud growth accelerating during the pandemic, <laughs> yeah. right? But, but you know, you wonder, you see it all the time in this, in this industry is companies get big, they start doing M&A, they start getting into adjacencies, you know, Google, Apple, yep. you know, uh, Cisco, VMware. You know, do you think you'll ever see a collision course with all these wonderful partners? Are we years away from that? Um, I think we're very careful with how we partner and who we partner with. Obviously, we, we have discussions on what our future plans are to make sure that what we partner on is, is yeah. beneficial to both sides. Mm -hmm. um, CrowdStrike itself, we're, we're growing all the time. You know, our platform has grown. As I said, the modules have grown. But in general, what we've found is that our partners are taking the journey with us. Um, it's one of the advantages of, of the success that we've had is most of the partners want to be part of that journey rather than sort of um, trying to go it head on. But you know, there's always opportunities for us to have open conversations and real dialogue to make sure that we do the right thing for the customer, and that's what drives everything that we do. You know, we're focused on the right products for the right customers. What, what, what's reinforce been like? What's the experience been? What's your takeaways from the show? Um, it's been a really excellent show for us in terms of uh, getting out, meeting a lot, a lot of customers at a very decent senior level. Here, actually, it's been very, very worthwhile. Um, we've had great response to the announcements that we've made. There's been a lot of, lot of activity through the booth, which is always great to see. Um, from a, actually, from a partnership perspective, from my world, you know, I've had a large number of really great meetings with the AWS leadership as well about what we can do together, um, and the future looks really bright. Who's the, when you, when you think, in thinking about, and I know you're not you know, selling direct, but when you think about the constituencies, when you think about all the, the partners in your ecosystem that you're, you're building and you're collaborating with, who do you guys collectively talk to? You know, who do you appeal to? Is it the CISO? 
Is it the you know, other security practitioners? Is yeah. it the line of business? Is it the CIO, architect? Who are the actors that you're sort of collaborating the, with in the customer yeah, side? It's really interesting, obviously, because there's different personas depending on what it is that we're doing. Um, someone who's really interested in our log management narrative, for example, is probably going to be maybe from the, the DevOps um, uh, team or from, from that area. For CNAP, it's going to be someone in the cloud architecture, cloud security architecture space. Um, Zero Trust, again, will be someone who's got a bit of an identity area and privacy to them as well. Um, a lot of this comes up to the CISO, and that's often our, you know, our, our, our economic buyer would be, would be in that space. But one of the things we have to do as we go into adjacent markets is learn the personas there and understand their habits and their buying cycles and, and, and build value propositions that work for those people. So it's an ongoing exercise. How do you see the CISO role uh, evolving uh, given you know, cloud, one of my takeaways from this event is like, I feel like cloud is becoming the first line of defense. Mm -hmm. the, the CISO and the developers uh, becoming the second line of defense. Audit is like the third line of defense. I mean, some people agree with that, some people do. Some mm. disagree. Merritt Bear said, no, no, it's all integrated into one thing. And I'm like, no, it's not, but okay. Yeah. But, but how is the CISO role evolving given that the cloud is becoming so much more prominent today? I think it's, it's at this point everyone said, you know, the CISO needs to evolve to being a direct member of the, directly responsible to the board. This is something that we've all said for many years. Sure. If you look at what we see in the threat reports, if you look at what we're seeing from the threat landscape, you know, the volume of threats that are coming through, not diminishing in any way, but in fact the size and the impact of what they're doing is getting worse. So it, the, the risk that's being, um, uh, uh, that's be, being experienced is just getting worse all the time. However, we have different options for resolving that issue. You can go down a services-led path with, a, with an MDR player, like our Falcon Complete uh, process, or you can go down with an MSP. So the CISO's role is now not just on what products and how to, how to use them to best defend, but also what products, what services are available. What am I going to invest in in my team versus what am I going to push to a, to a, to a third party to look mm -hmm. after for me? And we're seeing more and more companies at the, going up the, line, up the, um, the, the enterprise stack trusting us and our Falcon Complete team um, uh, with, with, with parts of their defense portfolio. So I think that role that you, you know, the CISO's role is developing all the time into something that's portfolio oriented, how am I getting value for service as well as value for money from products. It's a really interesting, it's a really interesting development. Um, in terms of what they have to deal with, uh, you know, I still think that the, the visibility that you see from the endpoint is it's where, it's where, it's where the, the, the crown jewels are still. It's where mm -hmm. the data is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really why CrowdStrike is a unique proposition in that space. It's what we protect. So when you say the endpoint is where the data is, to, to well, paint a picture of that. Well, if you think about if, if, a, if an actor is after uh, personal information or IP, they're often going to be going down to the laptop or the, or the, or the virtual instance level to look for that within it. And the weakest part, we've always said, is people. Um, and the more, dive, the more more open you are with that, the wider your audience there, the, the more risk you carry within that space. You know, we don't think endpoints are laptops or phones, you know, servers, uh, uh, um, uh, compute instances inside the cloud, they're all endpoints to us. Workloads is a better word, in fact. Those workloads. So, what's a better word? Workloads. Workloads, okay. Yeah, we often talk about workloads rather than Is endpoint. a data store an endpoint? Yeah, if there's computer on it, it's, 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 it's basically, uh, it's a workload where, where we can put a sensor. How about a, how about a backup corpus? Uh, a backup, a backup corpus well, of data. Well, I think if there's, a, if there's a place that we can put a sensor on it to see whether it's being, you know, it's active or not, and we can track the telemetry from it, we would consider sensor that Sensor would be an agent? Yeah, an agent, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. and it's, you said single agent. We right. have one agent that runs all of our products. It's, again, one of the design principles and the, and the basics of our company. Because one of the things that we've seen, maybe, tell me if you don't see this, is, yep. is that a lot of times, r ransomware attackers will go after the, 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 the backup corpus to mm -hmm. disable it. Yeah. Because you know, once you get that, you can't recover. 100%. So they'll, yeah, and they'll encrypt the, all the data on the network, and then they'll, they'll hold the backup corpus hostage. This is one of the great advantages of how CrowdStrike and how our platform works, in fact. You know, um, a lot of other vendors talk in terms of uh, you know, known bad, known good, and, 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 and uh, indicators of compromise, right? You know, I know this IP address has been compromised. I know that anything originating from here is bad. Um, what CrowdStrike looks at is, is, is we've built up a very, very um, substantial uh, library of what we call indicators of attack. Indications of attack are looking at the potential for attack and whether, whether that in conjunction, that specific piece of telemetry in conjunction with others, makes the attack more likely. So for example, 
if someone um, opens an email, we don't think that's necessarily you know, a, a, a risk point, right? Um, but if someone opens an email and they click on an attachment, we think well, maybe there's, there's, you know, that happens billions of times a day, so still not bad, but if that then spools up you know, a process, and if that process then starts to enumerate hard drives and start to look for backups, you know, we're getting more suspicious all the time. Um, and if they then calls an encryption routine, we can be pretty certain at that point that what we've got in play is, is a ransomware attack. Um, by looking at the holistic attack, at the whole process of it, and having that sort of fingerprint of what that may look like, and in combining that with our knowledge of bad actors, our intelligence in the field, we've got a very good view on what may happen there. So exactly to your point, if we see um, someone going after backups as part of a wider process, that helps us identify that something of, something bad is, is about to happen in terms of a ransomware attack, allows us to take action against it, put in the appropriate containment or blocking. And then explain, so you know, when people hear agent, they're like, oh, another agent to, to manage, but I was talking to somebody the other day and said, no, we're going to integrate with the CrowdStrike agent because it's so robust. Correct. And what we're doing, is, which is agent list, is it's good, it's lightweight, but we can't get the data. Yep. You know, the, the, so explain that. So there's a trade-off, right? I mean, you yep. got to manage an agent, right? But obviously it's working, your customers are, are adopting. So it's an extremely lightweight agent. That's always been the, the premise for this. And I think when George founded the company, one of the things he noticed was you know, how long it was taking for someone to scan, get, a, get through a scan while they were trying to get an email out before a plane took off. And he said, you know, we can't have this. So, so he was looking at how do we make this as light as possible. Um, and, uh, and so that's one of been a you know, principle for us right from day one. And you're right, um, third parties do want to leverage our agent because of its robustness. We look at pretty much everything that's happening as a telemetry event once, once power hits the CPU through until it, it drops out. So we've got a very rich knowledge of what's happening on every single de device or, uh, or workload that's out there, and it's very usable for other people. And as far as the customer is concerned, if a third party can use that information rather than have to deploy another agent, that's a huge win for the customer. I think we all know that proliferation of agents hurts. And that's what, that was the old way of doing things. You know, people would acquire products and try and bundle them together and what they ended up with was multiple agents competing for resources on the, on the system. By having one agent well-defined, well-architected, what we have is a modern, a modern software architecture to solve modern problems. Okay, so uh, last question. Yep. When, when, during the pandemic, we noticed that the, uh, um, everything changed, obviously work from home, remote work, and that the implications on the CISO were these permanent changes and we reported on this in breaking analysis and other segments. Endpoint, uh, you guys, CrowdStrike. Yep. Uh, uh, identity, Okta, got a boost. Uh, cloud security, Zscaler, yep. you know, got a boost. N rethinking the network, network security became top of mind. That, and that we said is, these are permanent changes, but now as we exit, but they were rushed, as we exit the isolation economy, what can we expect going forward? I think, to our earlier point, the ability for us to work across all of those areas and work better. You know, everyone was very much concentrating on delivering their own product as best as they could, as quickly as they could to meet the demands of the pandemic. Now we can go through a place of making sure that we work really, really well together as different units to solve the customer problem. So trim some of the, trim, trim some of the, of, 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 of the, the fat out of any integrations that we may have built quickly to solve a problem. Now we can focus on doing it really well. What we're seeing is a proliferation in our world of more applications in our store, so a tighter integration inside our UI with our third party products, um, and a lot of demand for that. So really that the customer experience is as seamless as possible. We talk about you know, frictionless, it's what we want to see. Um, and that's you know, the boost that the, 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 the disruption got from the, pande from the pandemic was a fantastic start of the innovation. Right now we have the opportunity to bring everything together to really solve some excellent problems for customers um, and make the world a safer place. Jeff, great summary, thank you for coming on. I'm going to give my quick take on, on this reinforce. I mean, I think very clearly AWS is, is enforcing the notion that, that security is, is job one for them. From the, the nitro chip, you know, all the way up the stack, all the way through the culture. I mean, I think we heard that at, at this event. Um, I think you heard you know, some great announcements, a lot of stuff around you know, threat detection and, and, and automation and, and, and reasoning, which is great. I don't think you heard a lot on how AWS are making the CISO's life simpler. I think a lot of that goes to the ecosystem, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, but the other thing is AWS leaving a lot of room 
a lot of meat in the bone, as we like to say sometimes, yeah. <laughs> for, the, for the ecosystem. Mm. Um, you know, security is a good example. I mean, you know, Microsoft makes a lot of money in security. AWS doesn't make a ton of money in security. It just sort of comes with it. I think we're also seeing the changing role of the CISO. I think the cloud is becoming the first line of defense. CISO and developers, the next line. Audit is really the third line. And developer, the developer role is becoming increasingly important. And, and frankly, sophisticated. They got to worry about securing the containers. They got to worry about the runtime. They have to worry about the platform as a service. And so, you know, developers need to team with the, with the, with the security operations team. So, that's kind of my takeaway here. I think the event was, was, was good. It, was not, it wasn't oversubscribed. I think people in, in Boston this time of year are at the beach. Um, <laughs> Whereas last 2019, you know, it was June, and so you, get, you had a, a bigger attendance. But that's kind of my takeaway. Anything you'd add to that, Jeff? I think the quality has been here. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe not the quantity, but the quality has certainly been here. Um, I think, you know, there is uh, a lot of uh, innovation that's happening in the security industry. I think AWS has got some good products that they're, they're helping deliver. But as you said, they're there to help us su support us and, and the other ISVs to really come together and build our best of breed overall solution that helps our customers and solve some of that complexity that you're seeing and some of that uncertainty you're seeing as who has to solve what problem in the stack. Yeah, well thanks for that, thanks for that. Thanks for that. helping me wrap up here. The, the security space remains one that's highly fragmented, highly complex, you know, lack of talent is, is the, the problem that most organizations have. Lena Smart of MongoDB doesn't have that problem, nor does AWS, I guess, because they're AWS and, and Mongo. Uh, but that's a wrap here from, from day two, theCUBE. Go to thecube.net, you'll see all these videos. YouTube.com slash SiliconAngle, if you want you know, the YouTube link, yeah, you can go there. SiliconAngle.com is where we publish all the, the news of the day, wikibon.com for, for the research. This is Dave Vellante, look for John Furrier from Monaco at the, the, the crypto event uh, all this week. And we will see you next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>